Hello, welcome to another chapter summary from To Kill a Mockingbird. We are going to look at chapter 22. This is the trial aftermath. And we have the walk home after the trial. Um, Atticus had put his shirt back, buttoned up, put his tie on, had his vest all fastened, had his coat on. He's back to his usual self on the walk home with Scout and Jem. So he's trying to put on a good show. He's trying to be who he was before, I guess. Um, Jem said something to the effect that it just wasn't right. And Atticus was like, yes, it is not right. And I think um, that was all they talked about. They didn't talk about anything on the way home. Um, they arrived home and Alexandria said, I'm sorry, brother. It's the first time Scout and Jim had heard her say, brother. Always called him by his name. And Jim is acting kind of odd. Now, he's been crying the whole time because this jury affected him, right? It was his turn to cry. He saw the injustice of it all, and it just wasn't right. And he's looking up at Atticus, looking down. Scout, still not knowing what's going on, is thinking, did Jem blame Atticus? We, we know it's not Atticus's fault. Jem knows it's the fault of the racist community. Um, and Alexander asks if Jem's going to be okay. Atticus is like, yes, he will be. Um, and they discuss the kids going to court. And Atticus was okay for it. He's like, make home is their town okay they grew up in it they might as well see all of its goodness and ugliness i guess um he's not trying to hide anything if that's one thing about atticus he doesn't hide anything he is the same in court as he is in home as he is on the street there is nothing to hide from him and jim asks the question how could they do it and Atticus's response was, I don't know. Uh, let me read this to you. Um, I'm on the, in this book, it's the top of page 213. You know, it's about a page into chapter 22. Jem asks, how could they do it? And Atticus is replying by saying, I don't know, but they did it. They've done it before. They did it tonight, and they'll do it again. And when they do it, seems that only children weep. Only the children cry. The adults just let this stuff go, right? They're the ones that perpetrate it. It's the kids with their sense of fairness, the children, and their sense of right and wrong. They see this is not right. Only the children cry. We had Dill crying earlier. We have Jem crying now. Scout's not quite old enough to understand, it seems. And then Atticus goes to bed. This goes back to what Dolphus Raymond said a couple chapters ago, right? Or maybe it was the previous chapter. He was talking to Dill about when you get older, you won't cry anymore, right? You'll become jaded to this, and you'll accept it, and you won't do anything about it. So he goes to bed, and the next morning, um, they go down. Atticus is in the den, reading his paper, and Jill has, or Jill, excuse me, wow, and Jem has this question, and Atticus just comes out and says, "It's not time to worry yet." And then he goes on talking about that they're going to appeal. Okay, Tom still has a good chance on an appeal. Um, it's not over yet. The courts are a long process. But it's interesting. We have Attica saying it's not time to worry yet. And we, yet we see this big event at the end of the chapter when the adults are obviously crazy worried. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, they go in for breakfast, and holy cow, they're having a better breakfast than the president in the White House. They got a chicken from Tom's father. They got rolls from Estella, the lady at the hotel. Um, 
and in the kitchen there's just pork and hams and grapes and just all sorts of gifts from the community to thank Atticus for trying. Remember the Cunninghams? They didn't pay Atticus with money. They didn't have it. So they gave him gifts of food, walnuts, pecans, firewood, whatever they could give him, they did. And here, people in Tom Robinson's community are so grateful what Atticus did, they're giving him gifts. And Atticus told Calpurnia to relay the message, never to do it again. Times are too tight. They can't afford to be giving up this food. And Atticus cried over this. He was so stricken with the joy and the gratitude that they had for him and he probably realized his failure he did not do what he should have done and he didn't eat the food right he thanked them for it and that was it he he couldn't eat it because in his eyes i think he failed them or he might have thought he failed them so he didn't eat it dell showed up and ate his breakfast for him And we go outside, and we have Miss Stephanie Crawford out there, you know, the town gossip, and she's got to get going. Um, Aunt Rachel was yelling at Dill for going to the trial. Stephanie Crawford got into it, and the adults are going around town, and they're talking about the trial. But the big subject of the conversation is the kids. The adults are looking at the kids, and... They're going back to talking to themselves, looking at the kids, and the kids know they're being looked at and talked about, right? Anybody knows this. And they're all talking about how these kids went to the trial. Miss Stephanie Crawford comes right up because that's who she is. Not a big fan of her. Anyway, she wants to know why they were at the court, who led them there, was it Atticus's idea to put them up on the balcony? The whole town is talking about these kids at the court and how it's inappropriate and making comments on how Atticus is raising the kids. It's just silly talk, but yet they're right there wrapped up in it. And Miss Maudie kind of shuts Miss Crawford down, which is kind of nice. They go away. Miss Maudie calls the kids in, and she made a cake for them. She woke up at 5 in the morning to make this cake. But there are only two little cakes. Usually she makes a cake and three small ones for Jim, Dill, and Scout. But this time she only made two. They understood when Miss Maudie cut a slice out of the big cake for Jen, right? He's he's getting to be a grown-up now, so that, that's kind of a big deal. It was kind of her way of showing that things are going to be okay. That's how Scout saw it. Um, they talk about Atticus, and it's interesting the way Miss Maudie talks about Atticus, saying that he's a good person, and he does what other people are afraid to do. Okay, so that's kind of neat. The Maycomb is a good town. The Christians rise up, and Atticus does their Christian-like work for them, according to her. Um, Jem used to think that the people of Maycomb were the best, but he realizes now they're not. They're racist. They're sending a man to prison, maybe even the death penalty, because rape is a capital offense. That means you can die from it because of racism. And Jem knows this is a bum deal. And he's being very jaded. He's now very cynical about his community. Um, Miss Marty tries to let him know that there are plenty of people in the community that are helping Atticus, such as Sheriff Hectate. Remember, the sheriff came by, talked to Atticus, and was helping when Tom Robinson came to town. Because of that involvement, Tom Robinson did not get lynched. Um, the judge, and we had a big discussion about the judge in how the judge picked Atticus for this instead of the normal new lawyer in town who would have had this, who wasn't very good, right? He was inexperienced. That lawyer's name was Mr. I can't remember, not Gilmore, Weather. <laughs> oh, Maxwell Green, right? Uh, Maxwell Green should have had the case. So a lot of people are actually helping Atticus, but they're doing it from the background. Atticus was front and center trying to help. Um, then we get to the end of the chapter. 
And Dill is fed up with things too. Remember, he is jaded. He sees the injustice of this, but he can't do anything. He's just going to be a clown. And he's going to laugh at people. He's going to be a new kind of clown because all he can do is laugh at folks. He's not going to be a sad clown that people laugh at him. No, nah, he's going to stand in the center and just look at all the adults and laugh at them because that's all you can do because they are so messed up. These kids have a pretty good idea of what's going on, and the adults just don't. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Avery comes running up, Miss Daphne Crawford comes running up, Aunt Alexandria comes running out, and the children are told to stay in the backyard. There is danger. The last time we had real danger in this book, right? Real danger was the, was the dog, right? The um, mad dog that Atticus had shot, and the kids had to stay out of the way because it was a real danger. And now we have a real danger, and we find out what it was. That Bob Ewell threatened Atticus, stopped him right there on the road, spit in his face, and he swore that he was going to get Atticus if it took the rest of his life. You cannot get a bigger threat than this. And so everybody's worried about what's going to go down. They're protecting the kids. And that's where we are. That's where we are at the end of the chapter. So that's the immediate aftermath that night and the next morning after the trial. Until next time, I'll talk to you later.